Hi and welcome to another video. In this video I'm going to be talking about my new camera. So for a while now I've been using my phone or my DSLR for recording and I've been wanting to get a camcorder because it's just more practical. So I had been wanting to look into getting a, at least a cheap camcorder for now and then I can always upgrade later. So I looked around and I was on memoryexpress.com and I found the Canon Vixia HF R800 camcorder and then I looked at reviews and it looked pretty decent for the price. So I'm actually recording this video with it now. And now one of the nice things about a camcorder is that you kind of get the best of both worlds. With the phone, I can look at it and I can see what's on the LCD, but I kind of have to hold it. Like It's kind of awkward to put it somewhere. With a DSLR, I can put it on a tripod, but then I can't see what it sees. Like I'm not expecting like super high quality out of something that's like in a $200 range. But it kind of compares mostly with my phone, maybe even my DSLR if the lighting is better. In fact, right now I have another light in this room that's not on. And I'm going to turn it on and we'll see if it makes a difference. Yeah, this is probably way better. Basically, it's just a work light, a LED work light, and I just have it pointed at the ceiling. Now, eventually, I do want to put better lighting in this room. For now, I just have like a lamp stand, and then there's an outlet down there, which is controlled by the switch. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm actually going to run a wire from the plug, like inside the wall, and then I'm just going to have it go up, and then I could probably put some crown molding or something and have a little hole. And then this ceiling is completely blank, it's a fresh light, and basically I'm just going to put some T8 fixtures. I'm probably going to put like maybe one here, like I'm not sure yet, I might put them like, I'm kind of moving the camera around but it's all white so you don't really see how I'm moving. But yeah, so basically I need to decide if I want the lights to go like that or just in a line or whatever. I need to figure out the shadows and all that stuff. But I mean, two T8 fixtures should be plenty. That'll be four 32 watt T8 bulbs total. But anyway, so that's another project. So yeah, so basically I'm going to go through the pros and cons of why I decided to buy this camera. Because obviously I have the GoPro that I bought a while back. I have my phone that I was using, the quality was okay, and I have my DSLR. Now a lot of vloggers will use DSLRs and they kind of work. You can change lens, you can you know, you, you can take pictures obviously with them. So they're good for that. The problem with DSLRs is one, you get a recording limit. Mine has a limit of 20 minutes. So I can't just plop it in the corner and do something and you know talk whenever I want and then come back and just edit the video. I need to take really short clips. And then two, it doesn't have a front facing LCD. So I can't just hold it up to me and expect that the camera's gonna get me and gonna look at the footage and half my head's gonna be missing or whatever. So it's kind of impractical for that. And another thing is even though DSLRs give you all sorts of control, when you're in video mode, you lose all those controls. You don't get like autofocus, you don't get like you can't really change the ISO or anything. I don't believe it makes a difference anyway. Like I was playing around with it and you know the shutter speed, like there's a lot of stuff that you don't actually have access to in video mode. The video mode on a DSLR is very basic and it's not designed for video. Now some DSLRs might be better than others, but mine, Nikon D7000, it lacks most of those features. It's a great camera for taking pictures, but not so much for recording. And now the phone, on the other hand, it kind of lacks the same control. You don't really have much control either. I mean, this camera here, I don't have that much control either, to be honest. For the phone, at least I have the front-facing LCD, so I could go like that and I see what it sees. And the focal point, or the, I guess the wideness of the lens, I guess? I should try to think what's the word for that. Yeah, basically I get a nice wide lens on most phones, so I don't have to hold it so far. With this particular camera, if I try to hold it, like I have to be like right here, and then it'll be like my whole face in the frame. So it's not great for vlogging if I just want to walk around, but most of the time that's not how I'm going to vlog anyway. So I'm fine with that. And then the main problem with the phone was that you can't really put it on a tripod. So like if I want to just place it and point at something, you can't do that. There's no zoom, so you can't really zoom into anything either. I mean, one nice thing with the DSLR is there's different lenses, so you can change the lenses. I can even put on my telephoto lens. Like I have. A, no video I took of the moon, which you can actually see it like passing right by the frame. So it's kind of cool. So I mean, I'm still going to use a DSLR when I want to do stuff like that. But for general recording, I find the camera works better. So now onto the features. So this is an entry level camera. So pretty much all the stuff is automated. Like 
I'm not even sure if I can control the focus manually. Like I haven't found an option for it yet, but it does have face tracking too. So like right now it's, fa it's tracking my face. So that's kind of cool. And then it has the LCD that turns around. So like right now the camera is facing me so I can flip it. And then if I'm going the other way, you can flip it. And of course it takes an SD card and it also comes with the SD card. I think it's a 16 meg card, I believe. So that's kind of nice. And it comes with a bunch of accessories like the charger, obviously that stuff and a couple of cables. It comes with a bag. The only thing I'm not that fond of is the battery has to be in the camera to charge it. So that means if you buy multiple batteries, like really there's no point because if you buy multiple batteries, normally you would take the battery that's dead, put it in the charger and then put a new battery in the camera and keep recording. But you can't really do that because it has to be in the camera to record. So basically the battery just stays in the camera and then you just plug it into to charge. And apparently from reviews I've seen, it takes like eight hours to charge. And then according to like the LCD right now, it tells me I have 151 minutes. And that's from a fresh charge. I mean, maybe playing around with it a little bit before I recorded this video. So, I mean, it's decent battery life, but nothing crazy. Like you're probably not going on a trip with this thing and then recording all sorts of stuff all day. Like you would need extra batteries that are fully charged. I guess that's where you would have extra batteries. I mean, you would swap them and then charge them later, I guess. But I mean, it takes eight hours to charge, so you would have one battery charged overnight, and then the next day, well... So yeah, so it's... I don't know, to me, they should have had a charger for it where you can put a couple batteries, but I think I'll live with it. What's nice is you can actually record while it's plugged in. So if I plan to record something long, like a time-lapse, I can. Yeah, so there's a time-lapse mode, which is nice, so basically you can kind of set different settings for, I guess, how slow it records. There's also a fast recording mode, but it's only like dual speed, so it's not really a big deal. Like it's basically 60 frames a second instead of 30. So I mean, you can see a little bit of slow motion, but not much. So I don't see myself using this mode. And there's also a different quality mode. So right now it's in not the highest quality, but the second highest. I think the highest quality, the only difference is that it's like 60 frames per second. And I figure it's probably pointless to record in that just because it uses up more battery, you get less space. So 30 frames per second is probably good enough. I, I mean, that's usually what I edit at. And as I'm recording this, there's actually an eclipse going on outside right now. So the first thing I'm actually gonna go is bring it outside and just show you the moon. So let's go and do that. And this isn't really meant as a review, so I'm not really going through all the features here, but I mean, obviously it has zoom. So let's go check out the moon. It's also extremely cold outside, as you can see. I'm gonna zoom right into the temperature gauge here. It's not really focusing. Yeah, so it's almost like, not quite minus 30, but close enough. So this is why I'm not outside looking at the eclipse. I'm just going out real quick, taking quick pictures and then coming back. Time to go brave the great outdoors. So as you can see, it has a pretty decent zoom. I also took some pictures with my DSLR with my lens. I got it on the SD card here. So while I'm here, may as well put them in, show you live. I didn't see them myself. I'm gonna go ahead and open these pictures.
But yeah, so this is kind of off topic there because this vlog was just about talking about my new camera. So yeah, so basically this is just going to act as some test footage, I guess. Now another thing I'm curious to see is how much better it is in better light. So I'm going to take it downstairs where I have better light. We're not in the basement. So I got the T5 fixture just above me, so it's not the brightest light, but it's still bright enough. And we're now entering the server room, so that's why it's so loud in here. And now I'm going to turn on these lights. This is way better, isn't it? Or at least I think it is. I mean, I'm kind of curious to see how it's going to record. Because fluorescent lights tend to kind of be kind of awkward. But I don't know, this is looking good on the LCD. I'm going to go ahead and take some random shots of the servers. Yeah, so this is my server rack. That's my mining rig. There's only two GPUs in there, nothing fancy. Two 1070s. This is where all my data is stored. That's a VM server. That's pretty much just a mail server at this point. It's, it was my first server. I built it in like maybe 2008. I was actually living with my parents. It was in a regular box, like a regular case, and then I converted to rack mount. Bunch of stuff here. Probably gonna make another video at some point explaining all this stuff. The purpose of this video is literally just to show like what the camera can do. Can't complain. I mean, for the price I paid, I'm really happy with this camera. We got time to go back upstairs. to the computer and just for the sake of testing it I actually put the camera on the lowest quality now and there's more the eclipse is actually almost complete now so I'm gonna check out the pictures and then go back and look at it again it's like minus 30 out there so I'm only going like one minute at a time because it's just too freaking cold <laughs> Yeah, so this is pretty much it for today. So yeah, I just wanted to make the announcement that I bought a new camera and so hopefully you'll be able to enjoy some better quality videos, I guess. So yeah, so bye.